Okay, so it's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce Dan Ramras as the second speaker for today. Uh, he's from uh, IUPUI Indianapolis. And Dan will be talking about singularities in free group character varieties. Okay, well, thanks uh, to the organizers. Uh, it's it's uh, been a while since I <laughs> was able to give a talk, so it's nice. Um, yeah, so, so this Lisa kind of set me up perfectly here. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about exactly the situation Lisa was describing that how, how singularities arise in, um, well, sometimes maybe the simplest character varieties, the, the, the case of a free group. Um, simplest, at least in terms of the, the group. I mean, there's a lot of complexity. Surprisingly, there's a lot of complexity in these free group character varieties. So, so this is all joint work with uh, Florentino, Garin, and Lawton. Um, so it's really, I'm kind of mostly going to focus on this uh, more recent paper with uh, Garin and Lawton, but um, it all that that paper is sort of a sequel to paper that Lawton and Florentino and I wrote a uh, few years prior. Um, so so this one is to appear. Uh, so I never know what year to say. That it, <laughs> that it belongs to. This one appeared in 2017, uh, although I guess it was on the archive for a while before that. Anyhow, so so um, the the basic objects uh, that I'm talking about here are these free group character varieties. So I'll denote them just XR, suppressing the name of the group. So this is Hom from a free group of rank R into uh, some nice reductive Lie group connected um, and then modding out the conjugation action taking the, the GIT quotient. And that homomorphism space from a free group is nothing but our copies of the group. So we're really just modding out the adjoint action of the group on several copies of itself acting simultaneously by, diagonal, by diagonalization in each coordinate. And so, I mean, this GIT quotient, well, you can think of it several ways. Uh, it's, so, so, so G here is a um, connected reductive uh, um, complex algebraic group. So for instance, you can just think of GLNC or SLNC or maybe the most interesting sort of straightforward case is PSLN C. Um, but, but of course there are lots of other Lie groups we could take here. Uh, and then this GIT quotient, well, so, so, so it's not the ordinary quotient because the ordinary quotient isn't Hausdorff. Um, basically you have to glue together any, any non-closed point in this quotient, you have to glue it to the nearest closed point. Um, and you can also think of it as spec of the invariant. So, so, so you can take the coordinate ring of G to the R and uh, it's acted on by G and this is spec of the invariants. Um, and that is a variety. I mean, the, the reductiveness of the group G uh, is what tells you that that invariant ring is finitely generated and that's that you're really looking at a variety here. All right, so, um, so, so the question basically that I want to focus on is what uh, can one say about um, the singular uh, or you know, complementary, the smooth uh, loci in this uh, character variety XR. Um, and, and, and also, I mean, so, so both how do we identify you know, which are the singular points versus the smooth points? And then what can we say about the topology, uh, especially of the smooth locus? Um, so the kind of guess or expectation um, is that the smooth locus, I'll just write SM for smooth, um, will be the same as the good locus. So 
So I'll explain what this means. Um, so, so good, so a representation is good uh, if its stabilizer is trivial. Um, so if and only if the stabilizer, well, uh, I mean, if G has a center, then uh, of course the center is gonna commute with any representation. So I really mean mod out the center. So the PG stabilizer of rho uh, is trivial, just write one. Um, so, so yeah, so good means trivial stabilizer. And the expectation is that those points will be, first of all, smooth points and that those will be the only smooth points so that anytime you have a stabilizer, it actually causes a singularity uh, as, as Lisa was, was suggesting. Um, so two facts about this that have been known for some time. Um, so Richardson uh, in paper in the Duke Journal in 88 um, showed that uh, if G is semi-simple, um, and then there's this technical condition with no uh, simple factors of rank one in the Lie algebra of G, um, then, well, the expectation holds the, the smooth locus is exactly the good locus. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's nice. Uh, but on the complementary side, um, Husner and Porty um, gave some examples uh, when G is PSL2C, um, PSL2C, so PSL2C being the canonical example of a uh, rank of the rank one case. Um, so, so this is the case that Richardson excluded. Uh, then um, there exist reducible uh, representations. Re reducible means the stabilizer, uh, the PG stabilizer of rho. I suppose I'm in PSL, so I, I don't have to write PG. The stabilizer of this uh, is infinite. infinite. So that, that's what I mean by a reducible representation. Um, so there exist reducible representations uh, in the smooth locus. Uh, so with the equivalence class lying in the smooth locus. And this is really um, in for r equals two. Uh, so x two smooth. So, so this is a case where even though you have large stabilizer um, for this, I mean, this representation is just two a pair of matrices. Uh, it does not create a singularity, an algebraic singularity in the, in the quotient space. So, um, so things are a little more subtle than, than one might naively expect. All right. So what I wanna, first result that I wanna talk about um, from my paper with Durin and uh, Lawton um, is that for R at least three, so you have at least three matrices in your representation, then um, the smooth locus and the good locus do in fact, do in fact agree. Can I write the word good? Let's try one more time. There we go. <laughs> I'm a little out of practice writing on the iPad. I haven't had to teach online in uh, several months. <laughs> All right. So, um, So we can go a little bit further and say that, in fact, uh, when you're looking at a point in the 
singular locus. Um, so if rho, if rho is not good, then not only is this point um, algebraically singular, uh, but this is a topological singularity, meaning it does not have any Euclidean neighborhood. Singularity, singularity. Um, so there does not exist the Euclidean neighborhood uh, around this point in the in the character variety. Um, so you know, in an algebraic variety, you can have singular points that uh, are still topologically smooth. So I mean, the simplest thing is to think of a cusp uh, where this point is algebraically singular, but um, well, topologically, it's still just a copy of the real line. Okay, so um, so I want to say a little bit about where this result comes from, what goes into uh, what goes into this. Maybe I'll just mention um, sort of a analogous classical result. Um, so just a remark, uh, Mumford, the early 60s, uh, showed a similar result um, in any uh, normal um, complex surface complex algebraic surface, uh, all, oops, all algebraic singularities are uh, in fact topological. No. Topological. Uh, so, so just another setting in which the same kind of behavior is seen that every, you, you don't have any of these points that are algebraically singular and yet topologically not. Okay. So um, I want to say a little bit about the ingredients that go into this uh, theorem. So first of all, I mean, to, to get one's hands on the local structure, uh, in the character variety, well, we have to use uh, Luna's slice theorem. So this is some kind of heavy GIT theory technology, classical uh, work going back to the 70s. Um, so in this setting, so I have some point in my character variety. Um, and so we want to understand what it looks like locally. And so, well, so the Zariski tangent space for the character variety is the first homology of the group with coefficients in, well, the adjoint representation of rho. So, uh, so rho is acting on G and giving an action on G and hence on the Lie algebra. And so, we get a representation of f of the group f1 on the Lie algebra that way. And this is just group cohomology um, with those coefficients as a complex vector space. Um, so, so to get the, the, the tangent space, um, so, so this is the, the Zersky tangent space. And to get a local model, uh, what you have to do is mod out the stabilizer uh, of rho. So the stabilizer of rho acts on that cohomology. Um, and so precisely what's happening is that there's a, a tall correspondence. Um, there's some slice uh, through rho and it's, it's a slice that's stable under the conjugation action and then modding out, come out the stabilizer here. And then what we have are two et al maps, uh, so, so there's an Estal correspondence connecting up this vector space quotient on the 
left um, with the character variety. And, and of course the point is that uh, there's some, uh, so, so, so row here, I'm just going to row. So, so this S row is just a slice, um, a sub variety uh, upstairs in, in G to the R. And so it's corresponding to just the origin in this vector space quotient. So what, what do you get out of this? Um, the, the conclusion here is that, uh, well, zero is a singularity in either the algebraic or the topological sense um, in this, uh, I'm gonna give this thing here a name. Uh, let me just call this, I don't know, T row just to simplify. Um, so it's a, so, so zero is a singularity in this T row um, if and only if uh, row is a singularity in XR. And because these maps are at all, that, that works both uh, in the analytic topology. So, so just in terms of the Euclidean, what well, the question of whether there's a Euclidean neighborhood around this point. And it's also true in the sense of uh, Zariski tangent spaces, whether it's an algebraic singular point. All right. So, um, so then the question becomes, so this just translates the question into something uh, more manageable, um, is this T row uh, manifold, uh, well, around zero. Um, so, so that's, that's what you're asking if you're asking whether rho is a, is a singularity or not, is a topological singularity or not. And, um, so there, there are two cases. So we're interested, um, well, I, I mean, I suppose there, there are three cases, uh, there's the case where things end up smooth, and then there are two ways in which it can be singular. Um, so basically breaking down according to the, the stabilizer. Um, so one is that the stabilizer of rho is trivial. So this, these are the good representations. Um, and well, okay, I mean, in that case, uh, you've just got a vector space mod nothing. So there's no, issue about smoothness. Um, so in, in this case, uh, we're looking at something smooth. Um, the next case is the stabilizer of rho is, well, I think I'm gonna list the infinite case and I, I really mean the PG stabilizer. Um, uh, so, so this is the reducible, these are the reducible representations. In the case of like GLM, this is equivalent to the ordinary notion of a reducible representation that splits as a block sum. Um, in general, this is the same as saying that it's image lies in some proper parabolic subgroup of G, but uh, well, just the classification in terms of stabilizers is easy to think about. Um, and then the third case is, well, when this PG stabilizer is finite and non-trivial. And so this is what we call uh, bad. So these representations are, I mean, the, the normal terminology is that these are irreducible, um, but I mean, it's a little bit strange because despite their being irreducible, uh, they, well, they have a stabilizer. Okay. So 
I want to say a little bit about uh, why in these second two cases, um, the, there, there is in fact a, a topological singularity. And, and uh, so, yeah, so, so let's look at the reducible case a little bit. Um, so, so in each of these cases, the, one of the key steps is to replace a general row in this part of the character variety by some generic, uh, better behaved um, representation. So, so the first question is sort of what can you say generically about one of these representations? And the point is, you've got some subset of the character variety, and you're you're trying to show that it, that points in it don't have Euclidean neighborhoods. Uh, that statement, if you can show it generically, well, then it holds everywhere because if you have a Euclidean neighborhood around a point, then everything nearby is also has a Euclidean, the same Euclidean neighborhood. Um, so it's enough to, when you want to show that things are singular, it's enough to prove that statement generically. Um, so in the reducible case, what we showed is that generically, uh, this stabilizer, this infinite stabilizer, is actually just a copy of C star. Um, and you can actually describe the, the action on this uh, cohomology in a very mm, digestible way. Um, so the action on, I'll just write H1, uh, just this guy here. Uh, so the action on H1, um, well, so it has a particular form, uh, is described as follows. So basically what I want to think about is like the eigen decomposition of, uh, the action. And so, well, so there may be some part where the action is trivial. It'll be called V0. And then there'll be a portion where the action um, scales uh, by, so, so, so here, lambda, so we'll take some lambda in C star. And here, lambda dot v is just v, uh, or lambda to the zero v. Um, and so here, this is really a finite sum, but goes down only so far. Here, lambda acting on v will be lambda to the minus n v in the nth term of the sum. And then there's a part where there's an expanding part uh, and greater than zero where lambda dot v is uh, lambda to the n v. So, so there's a contracting part and an expanding part. Um, and so, so this is describing how, how a element in the stabilizer, stabilizer acts after you decompose the space appropriately. Well, so when you're thinking about the quotient of this space by the stabilizer, by C star, uh, well, I mean, you can scale the action um, to just ones and minus one, or you can scale these powers to one and minus one without affecting the quotient. Uh, so basically without loss of generality, um, lambda, so let me call this part L and this part R um, acts on L by multiplication by lambda inverse and on R by just lambda. So these things are starting to look like projective spaces. It sort of looks like we have some uh, diagonal version of a projective of a projective space. Uh, so the idea is to show that this thing doesn't does not, the link around zero is not a sphere. Um, and this is about enough information to, to do that. So 
roughly the idea is that we take h1, we're thinking about h1 mod c star. Um, and instead of just modding out one copy of c star, you can think about modding out two copies of c star. Uh, where, so, so the point is, I've got these two, I've got it acting in different ways on L and R. So I could just take two copies of C star, one acting uh, on the left and one acting on the right. Um, and so this is like a C star bundle now. Um, but this part, well, the, the, there was the part where the action was trivial and then uh, basically you get two projective spaces. Um, uh, I should be a little careful. I should remove zero if I'm gonna talk about projective spaces here. So let me pull out zero and pull out, I guess I should pull out zero before I form the quotient. So remove the origin. Um, and then this looks like uh, just a vector space where the action was trivial across some projective spaces. Um, and this is enough information to calculate cohomology and, and see that uh, the, the, this link uh, around zero in H1 mod C star, which is my local model, is T rho, um, is not a rational homology sphere. Homology sphere. Uh, the link around zero, I just I'm really just think about removing zero, but could equivalently also remove uh, everything outside of ball of radius one or something. Okay, so um, so this this tells us that uh, well, this thing is not a topological manifold around zero because if it were, uh, we would be looking at a um, we our link would be a honest homology sphere, It'd be an honest sphere, <laughs> uh, but rational homology is enough to detect, to detect the difference. Okay, so so I want to say a little bit about the reducible case. Um, and so this is kind of different. So now, now we have a finite group acting on uh, our cohomology space. And so we're, we're trying to detect singularities in just um, some vector space, many dimensional vector space modulo a finite group. Uh, so, oh, maybe I should just say, um, you know, I mentioned this Huesner Porti result that sometimes uh, reducible representations have our smooth points. So, I should say something about why <laughs> what I just said doesn't contradict that. And the point basically is that, um, well, Sometimes projective spaces are spheres, right? Uh, so you have to, so, so basically, I mean, these projective spaces have to have high enough dimension that, that you're not just getting spheres um, in order to conclude this. Um, and where that's coming from is exactly this, uh, well, either having the R be at least three or having no rank one factors in the Lie group. So, so those, if you have that kind of smallness going on, that translates to the projective space part of this picture being sort of too small to cause a problem. Roughly what's happening. Okay, so what about the reducible case? Um, so, so uh, sorry, I just did the reducible case. The bad case is what I meant, the bad case. So here, the stabilizer, the PG stabilizer, of rho is some finite group, but well, not trivial. Um, and so the, the goal is to show that H1 mod this PG stabilizer 
uh, is not is not a manifold around zero. So um, there's a geometric fact that goes into our proof of this, which uh, maybe deserves to be more well known than it is. Um, so this is this is Kuhn's uh, uniqueness of uh, open cone neighborhoods. Um, so this is fact proven in the 60s. Um, so what it says is that in a Hausdorff space, uh, if a point, if you have a point that lies inside two different open cones, so X is in uh, some neighborhood U that's like a cone on something or other, uh, I don't know, S1 cross zero infinity mod S1 cross zero, and uh, U1, X is in U2, homeomorphic to S2 cross zero infinity mod S2 cross zero, um, then U1 and U2 are homeomorphic. So it's a funny little point set topo topology fact that's very useful in studying uh, topological manifolds. Um, because I mean, Euclidean neighborhoods are cones on uh, the sphere, open cones on the sphere. Um, so, so now the thing to notice is that when you have, you know, like this H one mod, the stabilizer of rho, uh, that entire quotient space is an open cone. This is uh, the open cone on um, the unit sphere with respect to a stabilizer invariant metric. Uh, by metric, I just mean pick an inner product that's invariant under this finite group, take any inner product, average it over the finite group, then take the unit sphere in that metric and the whole quotient space just looks like, uh, oh, I should say it's the open cone on the unit sphere mod the stabilizer. I mean, the, the vector space looks like a cone on the unit sphere. And when you mod out the stabilizer, um, what you're looking at is now the open cone on the quotient of the sphere by this action, and we took a invariant metric so that the sphere is invariant under the action of this finite group. So, what this means is that uh, if you had a topological, if you had a Euclidean neighborhood around zero in this quotient space, then that, that's an open cone neighborhood. So is the entire space. So, the entire space would just be Euclidean again. Um, so, if zero is uh, if zero has a Euclidean neighborhood in uh, H1 mod stabilizer, then actually this whole space is just homeomorphic, well, to a Euclidean space, but I mean, the dimension is just the dimension of that cohomology group. I mean, I'm not talking about a linear map or anything. I mean, it's just just a homeomorphism. It's and it's a totally crazy homeomorphism. It would be a totally crazy homeomorphism, probably. I mean, Kuhn's argument is not. I mean, it creates a crazy homeomorphism between these open cones. Um, but still, uh, it lets you it lets you shift the problem away from. Zero. It's no longer just a local question around zero. It's just a question of whether the entire quotient space is or is not Euclidean. Um, and well, so so maybe I'll just maybe I'll just say 
now, um, so we show that the, uh, the fixed points, fixed point set of each element in the stabilizer uh, has co-dimension greater than two. I mean, I guess real co-dimension, co-dimension over R is at least four. Um, so, so the, the part where the action is non, it, it, it has fixed points um, is some arrangement of spheres of sufficiently high co-dimension. Um, and well, now you can do some cohomology calculations and find, uh, find that this entire quotient space is not, uh, has non-trivial homology. Um, so, so now, some homology calculation shows uh, that um, H1 mod the stabilizer sort of comparing H1 mod, the, the point is to compare H1 mod the stabilizer with what you get when you remove the uh, part where the action is, is fixing points. So you remove these this uh, collection of subspaces that are fixed by some elements. If you remove some subspace arrangement, it shows that this um, has non-trivial homology. Uh, not just in degree zero. <laughs> non-trivial reduced homology. All right. So I'm going to say a little bit about the sort of global topology question that I mentioned before, but maybe I should ask if there are any questions before I say a little bit about that. Uh, all right. But so, maybe, sorry, maybe I can quickly yeah. ask something. Um, yeah. so, so do you need to, uh, I mean, do, for example, in the infinite, uh, stabilizer uh, case, yeah. you, you describe exactly how the action looks like, uh, more or less. Um, so, right. so does so, require you to actually figure out all these stabilizers? Like, do you sort of classify all possible stabilizer groups that appear? No, so, okay, so, so one, one thing I skipped over here, which is important, is the genericity statement. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so a crucial, a crucial ingredient, um, in this argument is that generically, generically, uh, the stabilizer of rho is abelian. Um, so that is actually the key uh, because the first homology of the group that's acting shows up. When you're looking away from the fixed points, well, you've got a covering space. And so, so when you take H1 minus H1, all minus the union of all the things that are fixed by something in the stabilizer. I don't just mean things that are fixed point-wise. I mean, anything that's fixed by any element of the stabilizer goes into the set. Um, when you map this down to the quotient, stab mod stab, um, that's gonna be a covering space because I got rid of everything with fixed points. Um, and down here, H, my notation is getting bad, but H1 of this, uh, of this stuff is going to be just the abelianization of the stabilizer. Um, so, so it's gonna be the, the stabilizer because in the case where the stabilizer is feeling in the generic case. Um, so, so that's kind of, that's, that turns out to be all we need to know about the stabilizer. Uh, we don't need to have a you know, really specific description of the action, just um, having a, a billion stabilizer or really, I mean, it would have been enough to know that non-trivial abelianization is generic, but um, mm -hmm. in fact, a billion stabilizer turns out to be generic. Not it's kind of it's a little bit tricky. I mean, it's not so hard, but uh, 
is, is one of the many things that <laughs> uh, Garin, Clement Garin contributed to this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a tricky little algebraic group fact. Um, all right. So, so well, sorry, yeah. is that is that why you can assume in the infinite case that it's the stabilizer is C star? Well, that that's is that, um, or was there any other? Particular that's reason? a good question. I think that argument is it's a li really a little bit different. I mean, the, the statement that in the finite stabilizer case abelian is generic um, uses finiteness. Oh. Okay. So so it's really a different statement than in the infinite case. C star is generic. Uh, I mean, it's true. That's that is also saying that in the infinite case, abelian is generic, but it's it's really a separate. The, the argument is really pretty different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to say a little bit about the the global the global picture. Um, so. Uh, so the global sort of topology of, uh, of the smooth locus. And, and maybe the word global is kind of meaningless here, but I just, I just mean before we were thinking locally and now we're actually thinking about computing invariants of, of the smooth locus. Um, so now we know what the smooth locus is. It's, it's, the, it's the good points, the, the representations with no, with no stabilizer. No PG stabilizer. Um, so what we showed um, is that the homotopy groups of this smooth locus uh, have a very nice description. Um, they look like uh, the homotopy groups of G, several copies of the homotopy groups of G, um, plus uh, homotopy groups with a shift of PG. Um, uh, writing PG there, just if you didn't write PG there, um, I should make sure to say this is in a range. Uh, if you didn't write PG there, it would only affect the very bottom uh, cases because PG and G just differ by a torus, and so their homotopy doesn't it doesn't differ in high degrees um, above degree two. So, uh, so this is in a, this this isomorphism is in a range of dimensions, range of you know, values for star uh, that tends to, in, to infinity, tending to infinity um, as R goes to infinity. So, we can compute more and more homotopy groups if if you have more and more uh, matrices in your representation. Um, so, just a couple things to say about this. Um, so it's, this is analogous to uh, some results um, to work of uh, ooh, Bradlow, uh, Garcia Prada, um, and Gotham, Gotham uh, in the case of uh, GLN uh, C reps of surface groups, of closed surface groups. I mean, you can think of this as the open surface case if you like. Um, so, so they got a similar description of homotopy groups in a range. Um, and somehow, I, I mean, why should you get an answer like this? Somehow, what you're really seeing here uh, is the mapping space of your surface with or without boundary into uh, the group. Um, this is the gauge group of a trivial bundle, if you like. It lives over the group by just evaluating at a base point. And then you have the based maps from the surface into G up here. Um, when the surface is open, that base mapping space is just uh, several copies of the loop space of G, because you're just mapping in a wedge of circles, basically. Um, and 
So in some sense, what we're saying is that the smooth locus homotopically looks like this uh, gauge group. Um, so I'm about out of time, um, but I'll just, I'll just say that the key point um, is a co-dimension bound uh, on, well, two bounds really on the, the bad representations, the bad locus um, and the reducible locus. So showing that these two, so, so there are two components to the complement of the good locus, the things with finite stabilizer and with infinite stabilizer, and both of them turn out to have high co-dimension going to infinity with R. Um, the reducible case, this was Florentino Lawton and I, uh, that's basically in our paper. Um, and the bad locus, that's, that's uh, so, so Garin's thesis actually kind of dealt with that in the PSL case and then uh, we generalized it um, to the, to this general reductive group case. And so this lets you uh, relate homotopy of the smooth locus to homotopy of the full character variety. And that's, that's kind of the, uh, the key here. Um, all right, so I think I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Well, maybe I can uh, start. So now you said uh, just the very last thing that you said, yeah. you can relate it to the homotopy groups of the full character variety, but how do you then calculate the homotopy groups of the full character variety? Well, okay, so um, so it's it's yeah, the, maybe 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 the way I said it was a little bit misleading. Um, so so the idea is really that if you sort of get rid of the let me write y for the the union of these two things. Um, so if you if you get rid of the bad representations and the reducible representations out of just g to the r. Um, then that uh, maps down to the smooth, whoops, that maps down to the smooth locus, XR smooth. And there, well, G is acting without fixed points. And so here you have a principal bundle. And so, so in some sense, the, the real point is that this inclusion is highly connected. Uh, yeah. So, so it's really the point is to relate the complement of these bad, the, these bad and reducible loci upstairs in the just easy to deal with G to the R, um, and then you know you more or less have a long exact sequence connecting you know G, G to the R, uh, and I should have written P G here because of course the Center acts trivial. <laughs> um, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this, so, so, so this gets you sort of the long exact sequence that you want, and you have to show that it splits. Uh, the, the splitting. I mean, this picture here is actually kind of helpful because if you can relate, if you can really make a connection with this, then there's an obvious splitting of this other sequence, which is just. The, to include G in as constant maps. Mm -hmm. uh, and so somehow the idea here is um, to try to actually make this connection to the mapping spaces. Although really the intermediary between them is a homotopy orbit space and you can already see the splitting there. So, so really the splitting comes from relating this, this picture to a picture with a homotopy orbit space instead of the ordinary orbit space. Um, and in principle, this homotopy orbit space should be related to the mapping space, but uh, that's a subtlety that we didn't actually need for, for the work. But 
but somehow the, you know, the, again, the idea is that the reason that this splits is somehow that uh, you're kind of really looking at this, these mapping spaces, these gauge groups, and there there's an obvious splitting. So, yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Does not seem to be the case. Then uh, let's thank Dan, Dan again. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, How are you doing, by the way? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know.